outside, which is scary. Yeah, you have the dual Yeah, you have a very good just take a little. Yeah. This time I'll stand up. And back up your place today. Really? Add more stuff. That real well. I know. My landlord. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know. You own everybody in town. Yeah. I hope you're right someday. Did that. you hear the guy that with the most units is going to get dinner? Really? He's going to be my leader. leader. I'll, I'll see the other. How about if I sign a 30 year lease? <laughs> you get two. I know. <laughs> Thirty year lease on life. Yeah, it'll yeah. probably be that anyway. With you, I know. I want to spend thirty years. Uh, the kids will get sick of paying the bill. Oh, Mike. Oh. Yeah. Well, feel free to join in. It's in the public domain now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is my shot. I'm going to Spain in a couple of weeks. You have to have your last shot 270. Yeah, and when I land, it'll be a couple of All right. <laughs> you have to have a 270. <laughs> Prior to landing in, uh, we landed in uh, Portugal first. Why does that make sense? Does somebody have a white Toyota van outside? Yes. You do? Yeah. You have a, no, you have a flashlight oh. by your passenger wiper. Sorry. Did you drop a flashlight? Bing toe. And then the flasher strikes again. So <laughs> you don't need it like days before. You have your best part after the flashlight. 270 days. You have your best part after the so I want guys to put the Just I up. I'm not going to do it. 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 i Finally, one that came over and said, You can't count, but you're beyond the 270. All righty. My last. It is four o'clock. According to my computer here, synchronized with Naval Observatory time. So it's four o'clock. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the uh, Harbor Commission meeting Wednesday, June 8th. Um, Victor, would you take the roll? Yes, I will. Bill Culler. Here. Karen Stroud. Here. Chip Everest. Here. Greg Fisher. Here. Jeff James. Here. Laura Coors. Here. John Baker. Here. And it looks like we have a quorum. We're missing JB, who seems to be attending via Zoom, and Tom Graham Jr. at this time as well. All right. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Does anybody have any additions, comments, corrections? I read the minutes and I didn't see any corrections, so I'd make a motion to accept as written. Support. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say no. Minutes are approved. All righty. Uh, second item is approval of the agenda. Um, is everybody cool with the agenda we've got going? Additions, subtractions, modifications. I'll take that as an approval. Do I need to do a vote on that, Victor? No. Okay, cool. All right. Um, today we are going to entertain public comment on the uh, update to the harbor plan that we're all working on. I see members of the public. Does anyone have a comment? No hands going up? I haven't seen the plan. Oh, there's a hand. Yeah, I'm over at 372 West Summit. And I just want, just want to say that um, uh, I did read it and it, it looks great. I think uh, 
very slow with the parts plan and thank nothing. you. Good to know somebody read it. Yeah. <laughs> you said you haven't read it there it's it is on our website. Um, and we'll also have another public input session okay. in August. Yeah, yeah, I just went in last night and didn't have time to read it. Okay, so. I'm just, it is on the website and we'll have another input session. Thanks. We do have hands raised on Zoom as well. So okay. Um watershed council, if you want to state your name and give your comment. Absolutely. So um good afternoon, everyone. My name is Casey Cook. Um, and I work in the policy department of the Watershed Council. Uh, and I first just want to thank you all for the opportunity to participate in the plan review. Um, I know our whole staff really enjoyed looking it over. And I'm just here today um, to offer any support that we can provide. You know, we're happy to provide. Um, I noticed in the red line version of the plan, there was a request for some updated data from us on water quality in the Bay. And we're happy to provide that. Um, as well as any other resources and support that we can to um, you know, help bring, bring this plan into its next chapter. So please um, don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can be helpful in the interim and we'll be sure to um, review everything and to provide any resources or recommendations that we think might be helpful. Thank, thank you, you, Casey. And thank you for everything the Watershed Council's done for us over the years. Uh, I've been involved uh, with the Little Water, Little Traverse Bay Watershed Protection Plan Committee since its formation, and uh, you guys do great work. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, wonderful! Thank you so much. Thank it's you. Definitely, it's a it's a community effort, so we're very fortunate to have uh, you know many partners in, in the city and in the watershed. Our bay. Who's next? No one else. If there's anyone else on Zoom that wants to speak, please raise your Zoom hand or unmute yourself. I don't see any. Hearing nothing. I guess uh, enter Tom Graham. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon, guys. All right. All right. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> The agenda that I have indicates we have no old business that we are going to review today. So I'm going to move on to new business. Uh, number one is uh, elections among ourselves here. Uh, the Harbor Commission has a chair and a vice chair. Um, we used to elect the secretary, but Victor has been saddled with that road in perpetuity, apparently. Um, so I would entertain uh, any nominations for chair of the Harvard Commission for the next year. I would like to make that nomination and have a nominate Jim Bartlett. I second that. Uh, Jim, you are online. Would you accept the nomination? Are you kidding? This is my chance. <laughs> Missed it. Yes, I would. All right. Do we have any other nominations? I propose Gildan to stay as a vice chair. Oh, I think we have to. I think we have to vote on JB first. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, does this have to be a roll call? Uh, it doesn't have to. All right. Well, anybody, everybody who's in favor of JB being the chair, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say no. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Thank you very much for the thing. I'll do my best. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the vice chair, who would be the person that sits in this seat when JV's not here. Um, I would entertain any nominations that anybody has. I'll echo what I just said. I would uh, propose uh, Bill to uh, be the vice chair. I would second that. Anybody else? Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. There you go. Same as it ever was. <laughs> but works, don't fix it. <laughs> all righty. No, okay, so I did this all bass backwards. We had public comment, and now next on the new business is public input on the draft of the Harbor Plan. So if anybody has any input as opposed to comments, do that. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I think we're there. Yeah, yeah I think we're there. But if anyone else has input before we move on, just. All righty. All righty. Uh, number three, LTYC racing event in September. I think we have George Pete online. 
And uh, I believe we have a letter that all of the commissioners should have received. Um, does anybody have any comments one way or the other on that? Or George, would you like to weigh in? Sure, I can give you a, uh, a little briefing. We are, um, <clears throat> the Malagas 24 is one of the uh, premier one design keelboat classes in the world. And we typically have in, in Michigan and throughout the Eastern US uh, in the summer series of events between 15 and 35 boats that compete. And that's a circuit of about sort of 12 events from kind of uh, sort of May, June, all the way through November. And then there's a separate winter series. This would be the second to last event sort of of that series. Uh, the, uh, what don't you understand? Nothing. Oh, that, phone. That, was, that was Alexa weighing in. Sorry, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, there, uh, there are a couple of events that follow this one. This is part of the Great Lakes, uh, or sorry, part of the National Ranking Series. So we anticipated to be reasonably well attended with between uh, 14 and 30 boats, uh, probably, you know, closer 14 to 20. Um, and then also this event would kind of be a test event to see if the city, the yacht club and, uh, and the competitors would maybe like to race a world championship here in the future, potentially as early as 2024, more than likely 2026. And, uh, with an event like that, we would have, around 80 competitors with between four and five people on each boat from uh, anywhere from five to 12 countries. And they would be here, you know, the top teams would be here for five weeks, not consecutively, uh, but would come probably twice before the event to train, maybe for you got a regatta, another standalone session, and then the world championship. So uh, there's a little bit more to this than, than just trying to get the blessing of uh, the city and the Harbor Commission, uh, which includes um, the, the use of the city dock, obviously, for a fee and or moorings, if possible, as well as uh, use of the launch ramp and storage of trailers in the lot to the south of City Hall. And obviously that's the wish list. Um, and, and like I said, you know, we're, we're totally happy to pay whatever required fees are. We just would like to go through the proper channels to make sure that, you know, there aren't, uh, there aren't issues of people getting upset because they were wrongly ticketed or their stuff got moved or, or, or whatever may be the case. Awesome. Appreciate that. So uh, the only request that you're making at this point in time is for September of this year, correct? Correct. And correct. the the primary, uh, I guess, thing that we would we would like use of um, would be the launch ramp and the lot to the south of City Hall for storage of trailers. And if we could organize dockage at the City Marina, that would be ideal. Um, because then we could keep everyone together and I think it would be a great spectacle uh, for the city to have 15 or 20 identical Malagas 24s all lined up there. All right. Um, Victor, is there any conflict with like uh, major construction equipment or anything that would be using that lot during that time frame? I don't think so. Usually in September, we don't have much of that. Like the, the, when the MDOT thing that's happened, none of that. That's not going to happen until next spring, probably. Okay, cool. <laughs> and Mike, you think that uh, we're capable of hosting all of these boats without displacing any of our other customers? We can find spots for other spokes and just keep these guys all in one place. My concern would be if they want to be here a week before the event, that could be tough to accommodate. Understood. We, we would make sure that the, the competitors and that everyone understands <laughs> that sort of the supplied or arranged dockage is only available for a finite period of time. And if you want to come earlier or stay later, uh, you know, then you're on your own with Wallstrom or the boat shop 
whoever. Yeah, or, or with the city under the normal rules for everybody else. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Does uh, do any of the commissioners have concerns, questions, comments? My only question is going to be to Michael, which you just asked. I think it's a great thing for the city. Why not? And it's a great time of year to fill empty space. Well, yeah, yeah it's September. Yeah. Yeah. We, would, we would have some attrition off the boring field as well. He mentioned boring. So I think it would probably be easier for these guys. I was thinking about this today to have the, everybody on the dock and not have to shuttle back and forth with dinghies and yeah. all the other stuff yeah. that goes with that. Yeah. So well, we can accommodate. It makes it easier to service boats if they're on the dock versus being on a hook. So. Mike, do you anticipate most of these people would um, trailer in, get ready, practice race, or are they going to dump the boats off a week or two early? Or Again, I think we just covered that. If, if they're going to dump um, the boats off early, then go ahead, George. Yeah, yeah we. Um, so Fred Roselle, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Fred. He owns some of the storage units up on Conway Road, West Conway Road. And he also has a Malgus 24 and has, has uh, told me and told the class that um, anyone who does want to come any earlier than, than what we would expect or specify that they can store their boats there. So we, we have uh, offsite early and late storage already organized. Great. Cool. I had a question, just your opinion, Mike, on the... Uh... The East Dock, yeah. 20 to 30 boats on the East Dock. Is, is, that, is that something that would work or an idea that um, he and George had suggested here? Was I like the idea either share? way of either med mooring or rafting. I think that the, uh, the med mooring would probably be a lot easier for these guys to um, get on and off the dock mm -hmm. versus having to worry about the guy on the inside and right. the trigger the guy on the outside. Um, yeah, so the med mooring, go ahead, George. The, the med mooring was, was purely just an idea, and I've, I've sailed a lot of these championships at a lot of different places all over the world, and it's a, uh, it's a pretty easy way to host a lot of boats in a, in a pretty confined space without, you know, really completely overwhelming and taking over whatever type of municipal marina or boat yard you're, you're sailing out of, um, and it's something where... Uh, I pretty much personally own almost all of the equipment that would be necessary to, to set something like that up. So it's, uh, you know, it's not like the, the city or anyone would have to go in and uh, acquire all types of crazy moorings and things like that. Sounds like a good backup if necessary. All right, well, I guess uh, we have a request uh, for, basically you're just requesting reservations. Um, and, uh, we have a history of doing that when it works out. And, uh, so I guess I'd entertain a motion from anybody one way or the other on the request. I mean, we approve the request. Yeah, I second it. All right. Uh, is this a, uh, roll call or, okay. Uh, all in favor of approving, uh, the request say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Say no. You banging it up today. Thank you, George. Thank you, All George. right, thank you, guys. Have a good afternoon. Yep. Okay, and now we have an item that I only know a little bit about. Uh, review alternative Harbor Master building design. I think, Dana, are you, is that why you're here? Uh, it can be why I'm do you, here. Do you have, do we have a presentation? Let's first go to the JV because I'm, I'm, I don't know much about either. JV is the one that gave it to yeah. me. I think this is, this is basically a new idea that's just starting to gel. There isn't an actual plan yet. Um, but JV, are you, are you on? I'm happy to chime in here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Great. Uh, the sketch you have in front of you is the result of the meeting I said I would attend at the parks board at our after our last Harbor Commission meeting and Bill Brown was there also. Uh, there, uh, Dana agreed to meet uh, Michael Johnson and I down at the Harbor Master building after it was clear that the parks board uh, really didn't want to explore putting uh, any type of a permanent structure in Marina Park. So uh, Dana and Mike and I met down at the Harbor Master office. Uh, John Cups had submitted an idea to do an expansion off of the west side of the existing marina building, which we actually entertained a number of years ago. 
the east side, JD. On the east side, yeah, thank you. Uh, I had to put down my beer to figure out where I was on this thing. Sorry, guys, I'm not used to not being in the room. The, uh, uh, Dana had the idea to uh, maybe take a look at moving the public restrooms to the west side of the, or east, west side of the existing Harbor Master building. And that got uh, all of us thinking. So we kind of beat this up a little bit. It, uh, for rough measurements, uh, it, uh, the public restrooms would fit in that area relatively well. That uh, would allow the uh, current public restrooms on the north end of the building to be used for laundry and whatever else uh, the city would like to do with that. And uh, so Dana kind of sketched this out and you can see this uh, in the little protuberance that comes out from the west side of the existing Harbor Master building. The, uh, there's room for the dumpster, there's room for the ice machine, the grade there that the current uh, uh, trash sits on would go down, which would give us plenty of headroom to make it happen. And one of the things that I really like about it is that it puts the public restrooms facing the park. So we get the bicycles and the traffic away from the north end of the building and out of the flow of traffic in there, which is really a, an issue. So I, I thought it was worth exploring. Dana drew this up. And uh, so it's on your table today just to get some feedback. Uh, if there was some, some sense that this might be worth exploring, then I think we could go ahead and, and go at this a little more. Uh, I think it would be cost effective, utilize the space we have, and it doesn't solve all of our problems, but it sure solves a number of them. Uh, do we have any idea uh, what it would cost to get an actual design by somebody who knows about things like plumbing and airflow and stuff like that put together here for this? I do not. There's, <clears throat> I'd like to find out if the concept makes some sense first. Jim, are you contemplating, is this contemplating a teardown or uh, a rehab of existing? It'd be an addition, Greg. <clears throat> you would come out the west side of the building, there'd be some concrete foundation work need to be done, uh, a little bit of roof work to be done, but not a significant construction project when you get right down to it, other than the mechanicals. I think it makes a lot of sense. I like that. We have to build another building there. Yeah. I think um, JB um, and Dana, how much, how big did you envision the west side addition to be? But would, would it hold the uh, laundry facilities, or what do you, you know, do I guess on that, or is it too early to really know? The idea was that the, if I can just cut yes, in, sure. the laundry facilities and the, a storage capability for us ends up on the north side of the building replacing okay. the public bathroom right and then this building becomes basically just a shed a heated shed for restrooms and as jb said it's highly visible from marina park which is an issue right now i guess we're putting a sign up on the west side of the building in the next couple of days to let people know that's where the restrooms are yeah. okay and traffic becomes a lot easier for, for people to control as well so. that lets us put in the laundry facilities that we've been trying to figure out for years yep without having to put up a new building exactly. and all that sort of yep. thing. I think yeah, bathroom yes. facilities without a new building. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, they, makes yeah. A lot of sense. I think that was amazing that from the last mm -hmm. meeting to now, there was the collaboration and the talking about how can we, because it was clear that the park did not want a building. Right. They didn't want our building there and we want our building, but we can't buy one. I'll be dead before yeah. we ever saved up enough money. Yeah. So um, I think it just solves so many problems. It's just really fine work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't we just spend over hundred grand on the bathroom two or three years ago? No, this is probably, I think Tom was still city manager and Yvonne DeWitt was still with us and that's probably 10 years ago. Yeah. Like is the footprint any larger than the existing building? No, the, the existing building stays the same. This is really just a 14 by 26 addition. Yeah. Add on where the dumpsters platform is yeah. now. The dumpsters we against the show. dumpsters towards the north mm -hmm. okay. and then build in that space, which actually makes it easier for the, uh, the dumpster guys to get in there and empty it week to week. So. Yeah, it's just concrete and asphalt right now, right? Pardon me? It's yeah. just concrete and yeah. asphalt right yeah. now. Yeah, it's a concrete pad that the dumpster sits so the plumbing's on. right there, that'd be easy. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. No addition to the east side there. 
Pardon me? No addition to the east side. Correct. It's on the west. It's on the west. It's on the west. Down in this, is this, Donna, this is just a sketch. Did you just, did you scale it out at all? It's on scale now. Okay, and the, so the turning radius to get into the charging stations and the other two spots? Mm -hmm. looks, exactly what they are now. Doesn't change. Yeah, it this is change. schematic, so those aren't like, um, <coughs> yeah, that's a good point. I guess the parking spaces may not be exactly right. Yeah, yeah this curious because exactly when you're looking at the, the layout of the, the line of the building, it, it is further to the west than are the last parking spots in the main car center. This, this uh, parking configuration actually is based on one that uh, Benchmark did in conjunction with the new Harbor Master building. Um, I think it solves a lot of problems. I don't know if you want to get into that today at all. Um, but better connectivity <coughs> with uh, downtown where people aren't always cutting across parking lots to get into the park and to get yeah. to the restrooms. I was just, one thing was just the radius to get into those four spots on the zone. You know, I, the way to look at this, uh, everybody, is it uses no additional space than we're currently using that's fenced in where the dumpster and the ice machine are. So traffic, uh, the, the, the radius you point out, Bill, that doesn't change at all. I, I believe that space, is that correct? The space you're taking up is actually where we normally park our patrol car. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. That's where the dumpster would go. Chief, that's the only uh, concern is that you're going to lose that parking spot. That's, we can live with that. that. So that radius would still be the same if we were far car there. You could take over my spot, Kyle. No, we're good. No, we <laughs> I like that that's now considered it's your spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually so like what I'm, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm hearing uh, general consensus that this is an idea worth exploring. Is that true? Yes. Yes, yes, I agree. Then why don't uh, why don't I sit down with Victor and we'll uh, figure out the next step on this? But as Bill suggested, I I think we need to have someone else draw this up and make sure we have the space that we think we do, and then come back with a, a floor plan, and then we can take a, a good look at it before we move on to uh, determining what the mechanic what what some costs would be on it. What I will do is, I'll, uh, JB, I'll probably also bring it up to council so I can get the go ahead to get um, some uh, preliminary design from somebody uh, so they can review it. They've reviewed a few different renditions of Marina Park and the Harbor Master Building. So I don't want to move forward all the way without their review. Right. I, I think that'd be fine. We can talk about that later on that, Victor, because it, it, I'd hate to bring this to him if it won't fit. We're just taking a guess at it right now. Uh, we probably ought to have somebody draw it out to scale and make sure that it does what we think we it will do, and then we could take it to council. But you and I can talk about that as we get further down the road. Do we have funds in the harbor budget to cover so, find somebody? It's not the harbor budget, it's really a waterfront budget. So um, whether or not what fund it comes from is going to be determination by council. I mean, I don't know if this is going to cost five hundred thousand dollars, which I doubt it will. And I'm going to say no to that answer. It's going to cost a hundred, hundred fifty, then probably. I was just speaking of the first phase of getting some drawings done. Yeah, and again, that's one of my reasons for also going to council because I don't want to spend money that I've really been authorized to spend yet um, for designs without going to council. Yes. And I would expect those initial funds as we go through the planning process and this would come out of the waterfront fund. Yeah. I don't think it should be joint. I mean, but it's down the road. What's that? I said, I don't think it should be all ours, but I, I never think that. So I think that would be down the road. No, it would be a council decision. Yeah, I think a preliminary sketch and a full-on design to build from are two different things. So right, Bill, uh, and I, and I think that's where we'd look at it. And, and Laura, I understand your concern on this thing. These are public restrooms; they're not necessary for the boaters. Uh, so there's going to have to be some cooperation between the general fund and the waterfront fund, and we'll work through that as we get further down the road once we have a plan that works for everybody. Uh, I, I'm going to be unpopular for saying this. I just a reminder that the Harbor Commission's goal is not to really um, make advice on how which fund to use. That's really a council decision. So um, I'll just leave that for the council. Sounds good. Sounds good. Do you have a question? Yeah, is there like a timeline on this? Are you thinking of doing this like 
next spring or no it just it's just a concept that bubbled up in the last month or so but it's, I think it's, it's all very preliminary it's an issue it's an issue that we've been trying to resolve for quite a while you know the the fact that we need to be able to do more in the space than what the space supports to meet the expectations of our clients and stuff. Anybody else have any comments or anything else on this issue? No. Yeah. Anybody? Okay. Moving on. Uh, Mike, Harbor Master Update. How are we doing? So far, so good. Um, the good news is we got all the dock projects off the docks in front of the Harbor Master building. <clears throat> Three years ago during COVID, we raised them 18 inches, thinking we we're going to see that water last forever, but we've lost almost two and a half feet in the last two years. So rather than have people try to jump into their boats, I raised us so they can actually step into their boats. So I seem to take care of that. And I don't know how I was smart enough to do it, but I built them all in sections. So Wallstrom's came in and craned all those out of the way in about two hours. And they're all up at the DBW now, taking up more space than Lucas thinks he has room for, but they're up there now. Uh, we have, we're fully staffed right now. Um, I hired a individual who used to have a slip with her. So her name is Pat Rowell and she's been a great addition so far. And the best part about that is she'll be available in the spring and the fall. So I can actually take some time off and after Labor Day weekend, which would be awesome. And we have two returnees coming back this weekend to help us out with 28 boats coming to us from Boyne City Yacht Club, which would be a real good shot in the arm for us to start the season. But surprisingly, even given the slow start and the cold weather and the fact that we've had the second hatch of bugs, it was worse than the first. Um, we're actually about even with last year's revenue. And right now we're numbers to, as of today, we're at $14,000 in revenue to start the year. And we're only about $1,000 short of last year's numbers. But I think a lot of that's due to the fact that we're offering a unlimited stay to the 5th of July. Had quite a few people take advantage of that, most of them locals, but it's been, I get a, another good shot in the armed force revenue was. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, and the good news is that for Blessing in the Fleet, the Madeline will be here. So that'll be 95 feet worth of revenue for three days, which will be awesome. And Blessing in the Fleet looks like it's going to be a huge event this year. We had 85 symbols last year. Last I talked to Chris, and they had probably 100 people expressed interest in being here this year for Blessing in the Fleet or in the water for Blessing in the Fleet. And uh, Regatta right now is still at 100 boats. And with your help at our last meeting, we're going to be birthing probably a dozen boats on that east wall to take some of the water when this crew down at the boat shop. And that's what I've got so far. It's been a great start to the season for me. Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Does anybody else have anything they want to throw out there before we go home? I want an apology for being late. I ran out of fuel in my dinghy. Which caused me, to, which caused me to, which caused me to row in, and then I decided to put some dry clothes on. But one of the things I noticed with the low water, something for Chief and for Michael, power loading at the launch site, with the water being down, boats are going in, and instead of they can't get their trailers down far enough, or they're skittish about doing it, they're power loading them, and that'll just wreak havoc with the uh, relationship between the launch and the and the, the, the ground beneath it. It is posted down there. There's no no power loadings allowed. Maybe. Not quite as obvious as it may need to be. Um, it's the yeah, lettering. It's, it's obvious when you're out on the water, not obvious when you're on the land. It just happened to be there. So, okay. Cool. I guess what you're asking is maybe we have somebody down there on a regular well, no, basis. No, 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 just a suggestion. I mean, there's not, I mean, MJ is not there now, but it's just something that indeed will, will be a problem as the season rolls on. She's back as of last weekend. Okay. Oh, yeah. And she'll be down there quite a bit Saturday and Sunday. And I've also told her that. She has any issues, and hopefully she's going to get a phone by the time all this gets together. Um, we'll send somebody down there to help her out, or make sure we get a hold of Kyle's department if it turns into a major league issue. She's pretty good about keeping an eye on that thing. So, yeah. I want to add that we I will hopefully have the, the public input surveys for the Harbor Plan out by early next week. Uh, I'll bog down this week with some meetings, but um, so hopefully by early next week I'll have those out. They should be out for about two months. Through our until our next public input session for the harbor plan, which would be in August, our August harbor commission meeting. Good deal. Well, there being no further business to attend to, I'd move for an adjournment. So move. Thanks, everybody.